place to be. It may not be Florida State or Notre Dame, but this is probably the second best place to be in the state of Texas at this time. Well, it might even, there are some people, a lot of people in attendance tonight that would say this is the premier football game at any level in the state of Texas, and it's kind of a shame we were talking about this before the broadcast, that uh, these two teams who have combined one loss between them coming into this game, yeah, uh, Yates, of course, 9-1, and one, and Cy Creek, 10 and 0. Oh, it's kind of a shame they had to meet this early on in the bracket. It really is disappointing because Yates' only loss was to Dallas Carter. Dallas Carter ranked number one in the state, and possibly I, I would say that they're in the top 10 in the country. So you have two teams, the best in the Houston area. To meet this early in the playoffs is really a tough thing, but someone, sometime, they had to meet. And so tonight's the night. Had to happen eventually. Well, of course, anybody holding this microphone would tell you that it's going to be a great game, but on paper, this one is going to be a great game. Two of the top offenses, two of the top defenses in all of the city of Houston, well-balanced, both teams can do it all. And on top of that, you have two of the finest coaches in the state of Texas, Les Caney, one that I would say probably one of the best coaches around. You have Ernest McGowan, one of the coaches there that coached under Luther Booker, a storage program under, under the direction of Mr. Booker. He's learned quite a bit, and at the same time, he's had quite a bit of success taking the Lions to the state playoffs last year and to the finals and losing to Temple. So you have two teams, two coaches, two outstanding programs. It'll be one to watch and one that I think people will love and enjoy tonight. Not surprisingly, both of these head coaches, Morris McGowan and Les Kenning, are both nominated for the Touchdown Club's Coach of the Year honors, and that didn't exactly make the news wires. Uh, both of these teams have stud quarterbacks, stud running backs, stud skill people, and stud defensive backs. You can say it's balanced until the cows come home, but this one's balanced. Yes, it is, and I tell you, you have two running backs from Yates, one over 1,000 yards, and then the fullback, 950 yards. On top of that, you have a quarterback from Yates that passes extremely well. The same thing to be said about the Cy Creek uh, team also. The quarterback is an excellent quarterback. One team that will also execute extremely well under pressure. Should be a great game, bud. Well, we'd like to thank you for sticking with us on Sunday Night Sports throughout the 1993 high school football season, and it all comes down to tonight. Round one of the 1993 high school football playoffs right here. Don't go away. Really. and the loser stays, it's that simple. And we are underway from Tully Stadium. They're expecting a full house. 12,000 is how many it'll seat when it's full. Still on his feet across the 25-yard line goes Landry Cooper. No, that wasn't Landry Cooper. Who was that? Uh, Jarrell Jackson. Oh, yes, the number one kick returner in the Houston area, I might add. I tell you, showing a fine return, but he kept moving the legs there, and I had a tough time bringing him down. Well, the resume of these two teams is almost too long to recite for you here. Side Creek, unblemished, 10 and 0. Jack Yates, 9 and 1. After stubbing their toe up in Dallas for the second year, a second year in a row, as Otis mentioned in the pregame against Dallas Carter, they've done nothing but blow people out. Fumble. And a big loss. John Porter has a little trouble handling the snap. And I tell you, but this will probably be the key to the game. Turnovers. Yates has such an outstanding offense and such potential to just blow a game open. It will really come down to whether or not they keep the ball in their hands. The firepower that Yates can muster is sometimes difficult to comprehend. The quarterback, Sean Porter, is a senior. He is a returning all-district quarterback in District 19-5A. And the two running backs behind him were first and third in rushing in district. That's Robert Jackson across the 40-yard line. And just as you speak, but a big run by Robert Jackson. And I tell you, a big hole blown over on the right side of the Side Creek line, the left side of the Yates. I tell you, those linemen just blew them right out. Huge hole. Pretty simple dive play. Good for a first down. Suddenly everybody forgets about the fumble. 
And Yates trying to get something going with the opening possession. Jackson again this time. Lucky to get two. One thing that Side Creek had mentioned earlier this week that linebackers were a little bit banged up. But I tell you, when you have a game of this magnitude, but you'll find a way to get out on that field. Patrick McGinnis, the nose guard for the Side Creek Cougars, floated out there to make that stop, bringing up second down eight. Both these teams really can do it all. This time the Lions will shift out of the eye. They'll give it to the second back. Clinton Lee spins off of a sure tackle and picks up about four. Yes, and there was a big hit by Brian Eggert. He just didn't wrap up on the running back. And I tell you, Quentin stepped out of there and made about seven, eight yards off of that run. One that could have easily have been a two-yard loss. Well, let's have a look at the eight stats. First in District 19 in offense, first in rushing, second in passing. Averaging over 250 yards a game on the ground. Well, they had to get to about the 50-yard line plus about six inches for the first down, I believe. Jackson's going to be short by about two footballs. Yes, and Yates is going to appear they're going to punt the ball. Big series for the Tide Creek Cougars. Tell you, you really have to set the tone early in a game like this, but and not let Yates get right off to a quick start. Because if that happens, you may never get back into the ball game. Kind of a soft punt, fielded at the 22. And Brad Shire is across the 30, out to the 33. And Les Kenning's Cy Creek Cougars will open up with pretty decent field position. Their first shot at the ball. Mark Cogdill is their all-everything quarterback. He wears number 20. Running back behind him, Warren McNulty and Ty Gilbert. McNulty is a nominee for the Houston Touchdown Club's Offensive High School Player of the Year. Hey, when you have two teams of this magnitude, bud, that are playing as the tension is high, excitement, should be a game to behold, one to watch. Here we go. McLoon is in motion to the top of your screen. He sets. And they give it to McNulty, who is down behind the line. Looks like 52 got there first. Arthur Jackson, 200-pound senior linebacker. I tell you, when you look at the size and speed of that Yates line defense, but you have a team there. Yates normally has nine, ten players that are major college potential, and it appears to be the same with this Yates uh, offensive and defensive team. Second and 11. That's Ty Gilbert, gets it on the slant. And he'll pick up about three. Bring up third down and long. Cougars in a hole early. It's going to be one of those games, but that one big play will make or break a difference real early. McNulty is the deep back. Fake. Cogdell in trouble. And he completes it for the first down. Nice catch by Ted Mercer. Number 16 for the Side Creek Cougars. Yeah, the quarterback did, quarterback did an excellent job of getting open there, but Scramble, I tell you, he was tripped up just a bit and he got the pass off. Cogdo was in trouble right now. Managed to elude. Get the pass off, pick up the first down. Side Creek from their own 45 on first down. McNulty, big hole. Finally wrestled to the ground by Benny Hamilton. 
And one thing, Bud, one thing you can say about the Tiger Creek Cougars, they're going to be a team by Les Canning that will be very disciplined. And you'll see the blockers that will go off the ball, they'll fire off every time, and they will know their assignment. And that is one thing that you can expect from a Les Canning team. I think we kind of talked about that a little bit before the game. Tiger Creek will beat you with technique. Yates will beat you one-on-one -on -one right in your face. A, a game of power against finesse. Hard to minimize the accomplishments of these two teams. Cy Creek played one other HISD team this season. That was the Lamar Redskins. And the Redskins got skunked 27 zip by these Cy Creek Cougars. And I tell you, we had a game earlier with Lamar, and they looked pretty tough, but for Cy Creek, to put that type of whipping on him kind of shows you the type of team that they really are putting on the field. Cogdell fakes on second down. Plenty of time. Fires over the middle. Another completion to Ted Mercer again. And Mercer, two for two, receiving, I think, with the razzle-dazzle, though, he might have sacrificed the first down. Yes, he did, but he stepped back a couple of yards, and he stepped right away from, a first, from the first down marker. Sometimes you can forget where you're on the field, and that was one of the times the senior did just that. It will leave the Cougars a yard and a half shy. Well, McNulty moved. There's the flag. Cogdell will pick up the first down, but this one's going to come back. Illegal procedure. Well, that's tough. McNulty, a half count early. And it's going to cost them, oh, well, no sooner do I stick my foot in my mouth than... Yes, it did appear that the Yates lines were offside, and I think the center caught the defensive tackle for Yates. Offside and used a heads-up play, snapped the ball early. Well, that'll be the last time I call the penalty, that's for sure. Freak on the move. Three first downs on this drive. It started from their own 33-yard line. Line of scrimmage now, the 8th, 35. McNulty picks his way for about six. Tell you, bud, when you're 10-0, you're, you're the type of team that's not going to beat yourself. And Cy Creek will not beat themselves. They're going to come straight at you, and they're going to give you the best that they have on each and every play. This is an interesting game. From the eye, guess who? He's got a lane, cuts back, picks up the first down, and then some. And I tell you, he is showing some nifty running in this first series, but number 22, Warren McNulty again. And he's moving the chain. And the Creek offensive line is controlling the situation off the ball. And that is not something that happens to the Jack Yates lines very often. And I tell you, bud, it may just be a simple fact of over-pursuing, over-playing, and getting out of your assignment. And when you have a team that is as disciplined as the Cy Creek Cougars, they will take advantage of that each and every time. Fans still streaming into Tully Stadium. First down give us to Ty Gilbert. Tell you one thing, but this has to be the biggest game in the state playoffs tonight when you have teams of this magnitude e meeting this early in the season. Disappointing, as we talked about earlier, but yet and still, well, they have to meet sometime. Well, it's definitely one of the best, if not the best, football game going on in this town over the weekend. Of course, its only competition would be other high school games and the Oilers and the Bengals. No competition at all. Second down. Look at that. He's got room. Oh, and he takes a slide as he crosses the five-yard line. And we've been watching a little too much football on Sunday morning. Yes, I think so, bud, because he could have, it appeared he could have scored if he had just cut it back in to the inside, but he did the wise thing. Coach needs him on the field. Mark Cogdell taking the old quarterback slide. And, of course, he moves the chains. Cogdell only a junior, I stand corrected, calling him a senior earlier on. Both of these teams stock with an awful lot of quality juniors. 
First down and goal. McNulty tries to get around the corner. Looks like he's got it. Yes, he does. And there's six points. In Side Creek draws first blood. Well, you couldn't draw it up any better if you're Les Kenning. You've got to like your chances a lot better if you force Yates to play catch up rather than trying to play catch up yourself for a variety of reasons. Number one, because the lines are just so powerful on both sides of the ball. And number two, because Creek hasn't had to play catch up ball all season long. They've been outscoring teams by 15, 20, even 30 points. And you like to keep that momentum going. Yes, you do, bud. And I tell you, one thing about winning. You tend to get a flavor for it and a feeling that's something that you really don't want to do anything but. And it appears the Side Creek Cougars plan on continuing that streak. Kevin but Ward fires a strike right down the middle of the plate. And with 3.28 to go, first period, Creek gets on the board first. Beautiful drive, 67 yards. Don't have a play count for you, but I'm going to guess around a dozen or so. And I tell you, just flawless execution by the Side Creek Cougars. Suddenly everybody forgets about Cogdill's slide at the five-yard line. And all of a sudden it just didn't matter at all. So Warren McNulty showing his stuff in the first big drive for the Cypress Creek Cougars. Now the onus rests squarely on the Yates offense. And I tell you, but this is a different team than the same team the Lions met last year in the playoffs. Now, if many of you saw the article in the Chronicle earlier in the week, <laughs> chronicling the trial by fire of most of these same Cy Creek Cougars last year in the Dome when these same two teams met in the first round, and the Lions pasted the Cougars 24-6, and the Cougars were intimidated from the moment they stepped on the field before the game. Yes, they were. I tell you, a very interesting article, and uh, it's amazing what you can do or what can motivate you to get ready for the next season. I think that was a stepping stone for each for each and every player out there. Apparently, intimidation not the case for Creek tonight. They're up by seven. Devin Ward kicks off, drives it to the goal line. Where Jackson? No, that's not Jackson. That's Brady Bob, finds the far sideline and tiptoes his way almost to the 30-yard line. So both teams showing that special team skill. Both these teams well coached. You can't really give that edge to either team. No, you can't, bud. And I tell you, you have a team, the Jack Yates Lions, that has been to the mountaintop. I tell you, more than once. You have a, a program that's storied one of the best in the state of Texas. They're not one team that's just going to lie down and let you beat them. You're going to have to come with it each and every play. Of course, let us not forget that they are the defending state finalist, Yates Lions. State champs in 1985, undefeated. One of the great teams ever in the state of Texas. Quentin Lee on first down turns the corner and will be close to a first down. In fact, has the first down. Yes, and he showed just a little bit of speed there, bud, on turning that corner. He's hit pretty hard, though, by the defensive back, and I believe he did fumble that ball, but it went out of bounds. So the Lions try the outside after having not much of any luck between the tackles last drive. Interesting call from Maurice McGowan to punt with fourth and about the length of a football. Creek took that punt and drove it right down the field to take the lead. And that fumble is recovered by Heath McWilliams. I think that was Roderick Felder, number 89, who caught the pass and then lost it on the tackle. Yes, he did, but he made a nice run, but also he did the one thing that coaches hate to see. He didn't wrap up, and he didn't wrap up the ball and fumbled. An impressive drive started by Yates Lyons. Two big plays and a fumble, and as we talked about earlier, turnovers fumble. will definitely decide this game. Fumble on the tail end of a big play on top of that. Turn it around for Creek. Blow a whistle. Don't see any flags. It did appear that one of the Yates Lions was lined up in the neutral zone, but let's see. No, the Lions call a timeout. They do need to regroup here. 
gather themselves and decide that they're going to get back into this ball game. The momentum has shifted toward the Side Creek Cougars. Well, let's have a peek at the magical stat sheet. Jack Yates averaging 375 yards a game, giving up only an average of 178. However, they are minus four in the giveaway takeaway ratio. Very interesting and clearly very timely in the early going of this game as they've already lost one fumble. Quentin Lee is the number one rusher or was the number one rusher in District 19. 1,000 yards even on the season. Nine and a half yards a carry. Robert Jackson was number three, seven and a half yards a carry. This is McNulty on first down. Those Maybe are, two yards. Those are pretty gaudy stats there by those two running backs, bud. Kenneth Knotts with the stop for the Lions. Sean Porter, number one passer in the district. 1,044 yards. Brady Bob, the number two receiver. Jarrell Jackson tied for fifth. Daryl Alanis, the number four punter. And the list goes on and on. We'll get to it later. Right now, second down. Busted play. And a flag on the play also. Here's to be a question. I'd say clearly that is the case. Face mask on Yates. Well, the Lions really shooting themselves in the foot here in the first quarter. Boy, I tell you, after that punt on fourth and less than one, it's been straight downhill after a couple of real big plays on their opening drive. Not only on the opening drive, but in the second drive also that Yates had come out. Two very impressive plays in one with a fumble that kills it. Something that they cannot afford to do against a team as well coached as the Sign Creek Cougars. Freak from the eye. McNulty. He's going to be short of the first down by about the length of the football. Needed to get to the 46 and a half, close to the 47. Big play now for the Side Creek Cougars and also for the Yates Lions. One that Yates must indeed stop him on the drive and Side Creek to keep this momentum going. Right now, they're trying to steal that thunder from the Yates Lions. Power eye, Cogdill calls a timeout as he was trying to call an audible. A little bit too loud here at Tully Stadium. And I'm thinking that the attendance is going to be real close to a sellout. I'm guessing 11,000 as we speak. Yes, and I tell you what, but there's a very heads up play timeout by the quarterback because the time was indeed ticking. And he was just about two seconds out of time there, so he saved him. Well, let's have a peek at the resume of the Cypress Creek Cougars. Warren McNulty, the number five rusher, 1,054 yards. Ty Gilbert, his partner in crime in the backfield, had 371. Cogdill, 367. And so almost 1,800 yards between those three players. They have three of the top 10 receivers. One of the top 10 punt returners, Brian McClune, is the number three kickoff returner. There's that special teams again. A couple of guys with a bunch of interceptions, 10 of them between Chad Orsack and Mike Court. Orsack, the number one punter, interestingly enough, in district play. The list goes on. We'll, of course, get to it later. Third down. Deep handoff. McNulty puts his shoulder down, and it's going to depend on the spot. Yes, and it'll depend on just how generous. The officials are going to be on this play, but Well, uh, Les Kenny really rolling the dice. That play developed five yards deep in the Creek backfield. A very slow developing play indeed, but when you give a chance for a team like Yates to react to a play that's developing as slow as that, you're not going to get a first down. Well, it looks like they make it the benefit of a spot. Uh-oh, they're going to be short by about an inch. Yes, indeed. All right, now, money time for the Cougars. They're going to go for it. Yes, they're going to go for it, but when you have the seven points on the board, sometimes you can take a chance or two. And if they don't, 
Get it. Yates will have excellent field position, and I guarantee you they will score on that. <laughs> Ooh, you heard it right here. Everybody's on their feet on the west side of Tully Stadium and on the east side, for that matter. Uh, I think quarterback sneak. I would say the same. They're going to try and draw them off sides. That's not going to work. That never works. I hated that when I played, and I bet they hate it right now. And they, they take the penalty. Well, uh, we're supposed to remain objective up here, but suddenly I had a flashback to my senior year in high school, and we used to try that. One year, coincidentally, after Les Kenning left Memorial High School, and it didn't work for us then, and it didn't work now. <laughs> Sorry, coach. I feel better now. <laughs> I tell you. Maybe the last sci fair ISD game we do on Sunday Night Sports. But well, I'll tell you, but when you have a team that's as well coached as the H Lions, they're not going to make the little mistakes like that. What a punt. Hits at the nine, rolls into the end zone. Holy Toledo. <laughs> Chad Orsak nukes one. The line of scrimmage was the, what, about the 46-yard line, so it'll go down in the books as a 46-yard punt. Yes, and he got the foot into that one. Hmm. Well, we said it'd be an interesting game, and I think we're delivering. Boy, halftime's going to be a show. Yes, it will. I'll tell you, and a lot of interesting people here tonight, but I believe it's going to be Indeed, a sellout. Those stands are still filling up, and their car is still pulling into the driveway here. Pouring in, if you will. Sean Porter sets up shop on first down. Jackson is the up back. Pulls his way for about three. Hey, Jackson also had an outstanding year this year. He rushed for roughly a 950 yards. Little chalk talk for the Yates defense. Well, they stiffened up when they had to, but frankly, I think they got a break on the play call on fourth down. Creek electing to take the delay and punt it. Heck of a punt. And again, that punt placing Yates Lions in a deep hole. Well, we just got some scores in, although since this game is tape delayed, <laughs> they won't be quite as timely as usual. And we'll get to them right after we take a break. We're at the quarter pole from Tully Stadium, Cy Creek 7, Yates nothing. Set a goal of the Access Houston family, Warner Channel 14 and TCI Channel 39. That's, of course, post scramble numbers. I assume that the great Warner Cable Scramble of 1993 has reached your fine home. Yates is in a hole. They're down 7 nothing. They've lost a fumble, had a couple of very untimely penalties, and a pretty strange play call. Creek has had one good drive and had one drive stall. Quentin Lee, lucky to get two. Okay, and Heath McWilliams, it appears, on the stop for Cy Creek. One thing that has happened, bud, and we're seeing that the momentum is shifting and it appears to be shifting in favor of the Cy Creek Cougars. One thing that Yates cannot afford to have, they do need a big play at this time to get them back into the game. Need five yards for the first down. Porter will pass it, but he will slip and go down. He might have been tackled anyway. Pressure came from number 63, Patrick McGinnis, the nose guard. Porter slips balls and Yates bust and I tell you there was pressure from everywhere on that play but the linebackers were blitzing and it was no way that he was going to get that pass off he did the wise thing by slipping <laughs> well I tell you I, I thought the play call was pretty good to roll away from the strength of the formation but sometimes it don't work like it's drawn up this one's going to hit to the 40 can be taken at the 49 by John Topolsky. He weaves his way into Yates territory. Excellent field position again by Cy Creek. 
Well, I tell you, the Cougars do not look intimidated in the least here tonight. They are playing. One thing that really impresses me, Bud, is the fact that looking at the punt returner, one thing about special teams, they can make you or break you. He has yet to let a punt pass him or fumble, and that is really the key to punt returning. McNulty on first down behind the block of the left side of his offensive line, and they blast him a hole good for about four. Warren McNulty, one of the studs in the truest sense of the word in the greater Houston area. Well, I imagine there might be a few walk college coaches in attendance here tonight. Yeah, I believe so, but I've seen a few lurking around up here. Big game like tonight, you're going to see quite a few of them. McNulty again on the run. First down. Willie Dorsey, the free safety, had to make the stop. <laughs> when your DBs are making tackles, something is amiss. Yes, and as we talked about earlier, but one thing we anticipated was that Cy Creek would block, and they would block extremely well. And to no exception, they're doing that, and they're doing it quite, quite well, and they're blowing those lines right off that offensive line. Slot to the near side, still in the eye. Gilbert is the up back. McNulty is the deep back. Gilbert! About eight on first down. And I tell you, if we had the benefit of instant replay, but about three of the eight lines were on their back on that play. Well, I tell you, this is one thing I really did not think I would see before the game is either team really clearly controlling the line of scrimmage. But having said that, I didn't think Cy Creek could do it. Hey, but they're doing it. There's one thing that knowing, uh, knowing the coaches here, Creek's going to have a good offensive line. You have to have a good offensive line if you're going to go 10-0. Second and two, McNulty. He'll be close. Jermaine Williams on the stop for the Lions. And you hit the nail right on the head, Otis. Cy Creek offensive line is just is controlling Yates at worst and blowing him out of there at best. Yes, and they're moving it. I tell you, they're averaging about five, six yards a clip. This drive started in Yates territory. McLoon in motion. He sets to the top of the screen. Student body right up the middle. Good for the first down. Yes, and Mark Cogdill decides to do it himself. You know, where was that play when they ran the delay? Yeah, when they Exactly. And that was the one that we anticipated. And with the way that that offensive line is blocking for Creek, easily they could have gotten that first down. Kenny not one to take a chance early in the ball game. Well, in many people's eyes, the winner of this game will easily be the number one seed in Region 3, Division 1. That's the big schools. Of course, three teams from each district make it into the playoffs now. One in the big bracket, two in the not quite as big bracket. McNulty, huge hole inside the 10. And running with some authority. And a suddenly very quiet Yates side of the field staring <laughs> in no small measure of disbelief at the goings on here in the second quarter. Yes, indeed. And I tell you, they are being controlled on that offensive line. Up and down the offensive line. There's not one player over there that's not getting blown off the ball right now, but... Creek has thrown two passes. Both of, both of them were complete. Both of them were good for first downs on that touchdown drive. And the Cougars knocking at the door right here. Second down and short. Gilbert, he'll pick up the first down, and it'll be first and goal. Wow, very businesslike drive. Yes, and I tell you, if Yates' defense is going to stiffen at any time, it better be now because... With the type of team that Cy Creek places on the field, but they'll get at least three points out of this drive. A minimum. In addition to everything else being solid, both teams have terrific kickers. Sadly, they're sounding taps for our replay machine right now. 
Perhaps we could have a ceremonial burial after the game. Yeah, we're going to need to, I believe. First and goal, Cypress Creek. Trying to stuff it right down the throat of the Yates Lions. Gilbert slips and falls as he crosses the line of scrimmage. Yes, that AstroTurf jumped up and brought him down. A big break for the Yates Lions. Well, the way that uh, the Cougars have been picking up yardage on this drive, however, <laughs> might not make that much difference. Second down goal. A nice bootleg by the quarterback and Cogdill goes down and he'll lose about three more and that'll bring up third down goal and this time from the 10. Huh, well. The moisture on AstroTurf, would you say, bud? With the slight could, mist earlier? It could be. Whatever vestiges and visits from winter we had in the late part of October and the early part of November have now gone by the wayside. Temperature at game time, low 80s. Humidity, high 90s. Liquid sky, Houston, Texas. It's a typical Houston evening. Cogdell set to throw his third pass. Throws it in the dirt. He was looking for McNulty who flashed open for a moment, but was then covered up pretty quickly by Walter Kemper, I believe, out there. Yes, and the Yates line is very fortunate on that drive because could have easily been another six points by the Cy Creek Cougars. Well, theoretically, we could see a fake here, but I think not. Kevin Ward, no sense in wasting that foot, especially not when you're looking pretty tough on offense and on defense. 5.33 to go first half. Creek trying to pad their lead. And I believe we have one of the Yates Lions offsides, bud. Could be a very costly penalty indeed. Hmm. I think it likely that Creek would leave the points on the board. One of the maxims of football is, or you never take points off the board. I yep. think this is one of those times where that rule is in effect. Yes, and I saw the coach signaling to, signaling to his players, say, no, we are taking the points here, guys. No penalty for us. So a drive that begins at the Yates 47-yard line, stalls at the Yates 10-yard line after four first downs. And Creek has to settle for a field goal, 529 to go. Second period, Cy Creek 10, Yates zip. And I would say, Bud, Cy Creek has come out and they've dominated this ball game from beginning to the end. Only Yates tripping themselves up on some unfortunate plays and some mysterious play calling in that first series. <laughs> no mercy from the announcers tonight here. We rag on both coaches. At least we're objective. Yes, indeed. Uh, I tell you, to be fair to the Lions, they look pretty tough on offense in spurts, but no sooner than they reel off a good play do they shoot themselves right in the foot, i.e. penalty, fumble, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, and you have, uh, we just had a shot of the defensive coach there with his troops trying to get them inspired to, to figure out what's happening to them on that defensive line because Ty Creek has been dominating him this whole ball game. Well, the Lions will be looking to get their crowd back into this game. Very quiet, not surprisingly, on the west side of Tully Stadium. It's been highly unusual for Yates' crowd to be this quiet, this somber, especially this early on. Fourth kick is short and fielded on the run at the 19-yard line by Brady Bob, who ends up at the 33. Again, the Lions with good field position, although they've done nothing with it. At least not yet to this date. That's a straight line for you there, Otis. <laughs> you know what, Bud, I believe after seeing what has happened in those first two series, we may see a different Yates offensive team step up to the ball here. I'm sure Coach McGowan has stepped over to his players and said it's time to start playing a little bit of football, guys. Um, I think you're probably paraphrasing a little bit, Otis, but I'm sure he said something like that. Jackson has trouble handling the handoff on first down and goes down behind the line. Care of Josh Williams. One thing about a team that's 10 and 0, once you give them, you give them the confidence, playing a team like Yates, 
they're going to be hard to contend with, but they're going to be hard, hard to, to really get over that hump with them. Ty Creek's ready to play. One thing the eighth lines do have is quick strike capability. Here's that rollout again. Sean Porter complete. Jarrell Jackson out of bounds at the 33-yard line, so not a whole lot there. It's a nice pass by the quarterback, but only for a couple of yards. Go down as a, as a completion and a gain of maybe a yard. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Call it third down, 10. Yes. He may have lost the yard. It looked good, though. And that is a huge offensive line. Stepping up to the ball, up to the ball for the Hayes Lions. And they're in the run and shoot right now, but Porter looking for oh, looking for Jackson over the middle. Jackson was open. The pass was behind him. And right through the hands of number 14, Pete McWilliams. <laughs> so a collective sigh of relief from the Yates Lions and their fans. And that was the weakest looking possession they've had all game. Three and out, that's the first time I think they've done that. Yes, it is. Of course, they've gone two and out after a fumble, but not quite the same. And a question on the play. Flags fly, kind of a brick punt. Fields at the 33-yard line by Kapalski, who is hammered. Yes, he is. But there are hankies on the field. Was that number 95, Gerald Butler? First man down, the defensive lineman, 6'5", 257 pounds, senior. And the man in the white hat talking with the Yates Lions. That would have to be a heck of a penalty to make much difference. Offside Creek declined. Huh. Hmm. Well, I would think that they would take their chances with another punt from five yards ahead. That one, frankly, not all that great. And the return was pretty good. So they concede opening field position at the 39-yard line. I am surprised on not taking the penalty on that one, but very surprised. And Creek lines up there, way over on the left hand of your screen. A fake. Cogdale, plenty of time, gets it off. He drills that one to number 27, Brian McClune. A nice catch by the 179-pound senior. Boy, McClune. Open just for a moment. Walter Kemper out there trying to get the coverage. Cogdale all the time in the world and a flag in the backfield where usually holding winds up being the call. But man in the white hat this time talking to the Side Creek Cougars. You got to take the play here. Give me a break. And I tell you, bud, Coach McGowan is calling his complete team to the sideline. I tell you. He wants to get these guys motivated and get their heads back into the ball game. Boy, and that is a sea of scarlet, too, let me tell you. <laughs> Look like they brought everything but the kitchen sink from the Yates High School for this ball game. And it is a huge penalty, bud. What has happened here? Uh, I got no idea. Del Del I give up. You know, that red is so bright, it would be that bright on a black and white TV, I think. Let's see, but if I'm not mistaken, was that ball on the 39-yard line? We have 10, 20, 26 yards on the penalty. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what's going on, Otis. And I have been unsuccessful thus far. I saw a timeout signal, and then I saw a delay of game signal. I'm not sure how you can delay the game on defense. But it's all speculation. There's the man who caught the pass, Brian McClune. There's still a huddle of the zebras at the 34, and, well, we may never figure it out. I'm not even sure replay would help us there. Whatever it is, it's to the benefit of Psy Creek, no doubt about it, to the tune of about 20 yards. Line of scrimmage now, the Yates, 34. 
Yeah. It appeared to be a roughing the passer play there, and I'll tell you what, they paid dearly for that penalty, but Ty Gilbert gets the call on first down. All right, roughing the passer makes sense. I thought that was uh, 15 from the line of scrimmage, though. It may have been tacked on from the completed pass. Hmm. It would only have to be when you see the movement of the ball, because the ball moves, what, about 25 yards from the line of scrimmage. I have never professed to be an expert on rules and shall not hear today. I'm not going to take a chance, but that was probably the clearest explanation that I could come up with. Cogdill, all the time in the world, tucks and goes down for, I think, the first time in the game. Yes, and Yates with excellent coverage on the wide outs for the Sign Creek Cougars. And it couldn't have happened at a better time for Yates because they need to get back into this ball game and change this momentum. Third and 10. Well, if they could get the ball to the 25, Ward might have a shot. He's that good. Over the middle. Oh, almost intercepted. Bad pass. Cogdill threw it into heavy coverage. Looking for number 11. Drum roll, please. Steve Gibbs. Yes, and also number 61 on the coverage, Jason Alex. That was right up on that receiver there. Ball went right through his hands, had an opportunity at an interception. Fourth down. And we'll see Chad Orsak punting from his own 49-yard line. Well, let's see. Well, he'll be aiming for a corner. Now they're going to fake it. Wide open. Yes. Oh, and he dropped the pass, but he was wide open. He saw the touchdown all over him. I tell you what, he was counting to six points. Oh, almost hate to give you his name, but we're obligated to let you know that that was <laughs> Heath yes. McWilliams. Yes, he saw six points, but he just knew that he was going to step into the end zone. And an excellent play call by the Side Creek Cougars because no one was on him. Oh, <laughs> Well, at least he gets to stay on the field and atone for his sins. Oh, and just like that, the Yates faithful back into the game. Yes, and you can hear the roar of the crowd because that was indeed a big break for the Yates Lions. Flag, Porter on first down. Throws it behind Brady Bob. And there is a question on the play, the little yellow hanky. And it's appears to be against the Yates line. What is that? Illegal motion. <laughs> Another costly penalty. That'll bring up first down 15. Definitely take the penalty here. Notice how I waited until I started marking it off before I... Yes. But I tell you, another... Another shot in the foot to well, the Yates line. I tell you, folks, if you never watch halftime at a football game. Tonight is the night to start. Two of the premier bands and drill teams in the area, if not the state of Texas. Nothing there. Quentin Lee is smothered about two yards deep in the backfield. Yes, and I think he made a poor choice, but he had the man down and had the sideline, but he decided to cut it back up inside and Gave the, the guy a chance to get back up. Well, the paparazzi is out in force at this game tonight. No surprise there. Coast Communications, the radio home of the Cy Creek Cougars and KYOK's coverage with Arthur Prather and Daryl Artisan. Yes, Arthur has a radio gig, too. That's complete. Not quite for a first down as Orsak trips up Brady Bob. About a yard shy of the first down. And let's see, with two minutes left in the ball game, bud, will Coach McGowan go for it? Mm, he thinks he will. Well, it is only third down after all, so. Ah, we're looking at the fourth. It is third. My mistake. Everyone on their feet. No, sir. And a flag. Patrick also. McGinnis. On the stop for Creek. They gave it to Jackson. And this penalty goes against Creek. 
And a nice break for the Yates Lions. I tell you, but this will keep the chains moving for them. They need to get on this scoreboard before the half ends. I think that's only the... And it's a big one. I think that's only the second penalty on Creek. It's a big one, as Otis said. Personal foul. 15 yards. First down. Yates inside Creek territory at the 43. I think one of the players got maybe a little overzealous. Well, uh, this will be a game played at high intensity. High intensity and high emotion. That's only one way to play it, bud, but you really do have to keep your head because it can cost you. Sean Porter calls timeout for the Yates Lions. 138 to go, first half. Creek still up by 10. I tell you, Yates Lions are in a position now, but they can't afford to make a mistake. They need to get on the board, and they need seven points. They need seven points in a bad way. Well, Yates took the opening kickoff, had a good-looking drive, and then that drive was killed with a penalty. Creek did basically nothing with the next possession. Yates had a big pass play and then fumbled. Creek recovered, drove 67 yards for the touchdown. Then Yates had a fourth and inches, elected to punt. Creek got the ball inside Yates' territory, drove right down the field. It stalled inside the 10. They kicked a field goal. That is the scoring. It's 10-zip Creek. You know, Bud, I think that you'll see a, a different Yates team after the halftime. And I tell you, I would love to be a fly on the wall in that dressing room. Porter, the delay. Still on his feet. Quentin Lee. Finally corralled inside the 40. And I believe he received just a little help, bud, when he was hit from behind and knocked him another four or five yards. <laughs> Second and five. Lee, the lone setback behind Porter. Three receivers top of your screen. Porter under pressure, gets it off. Complete to Brady Bob for the first down. Yes, and a nice catch. I tell you, you saw the linebacker blitz by Side Creek. They let it all loose on that particular play, bud, and it could have been another <laughs> opportunity for six points for Yates, but he just could not shake the defensive back. Yates has gone to the run and shoot here to move the ball late into the, to the time here with only 51 seconds. Same formation. Porter rolls near side. He's got some room. He'll keep it and get pushed out of bounds at the 19. By big number 51, Ryan Fay. It's in really good field pursuit by Mr. Fay because he had a lot of room to run on that sideline, but. Porter stops short of the first. Second down and one, 42 seconds to go, first half. The Lions trying to get on the board. They're down, 10 zip. <laughs> Bounces in front of Roderick Felder. And I tell you, actually, very good pass coverage by Cy Creek. They had every man covered there, but and any time you overload a side like that, such as what Yates is doing there to the strong side. It can make it very tough for the secondary. Third down one. Well, you gotta go for the first down. Yates has no more timeouts. Porter's going for it all. He's gonna be overthrown. And that'll bring up fourth down as the Side Creek Band gets an up-close and personal look at Brady Bob. Oh, Bob with a couple of words for Chad Orsack. Well, another interesting play call for Maurice McGowan. Yes, it is, and I tell you what, it is time to call the troops to the side. And Creek takes a timeout and gives McGowan time to think about it. Hmm, 31 seconds to go. Big play for both sides of the football. Well, we can talk about some of those scores that we got earlier. 
Although, of course, they'll all be history by the time... Oh, they walked off, huh? I thought I had them. Okay, well, the one of most note to me, as I recall, was Madison walking all over Stratford, 19 zip in the second period. And we had a game earlier with Madison. They have a very explosive offense. Elsick in front of the Lamar Redskins, 7 zip at half. Laporte taking it to Nimitz, 24 10. Clear Lake and Dulles tied at 7 over at Rice Stadium. And Bay City, 35 <laughs> 0 over Fur at the half. Of course, Fur, we noted, well, didn't note to you at home, 3 and 7 and in the playoffs. Like they squeaked in there, I would say. A big play here. Fourth and one. That's a first down. That'll stop the clock. Jackson picks it up. Gives the Lions another series. But they've only got 28 seconds to work with. I tell you, bud. Gates needs seven points this time. And I think they're going to go for broke. I don't think you'll see a field goal kicked on this drive. Well, they can't stop the clock. So the running plays... Would be dangerous call at this point. Porter flips it out on the flats. And Brady Bob will be held inbounds. The clock will roll. It is at 11 seconds. That could be it in the first half. It's in a very poor move by the wide receiver because he brought the ball back into the field of play. And the clock will run out on them. They're not going to get this play off. And that's it. What a break for the Side Creek Cougars. Yates tries to knock at the door. They come close. But they come up empty, and they will go into the locker room at halftime, down by 10 points with the momentum clearly in the favor of Side Creek. In a very, very hard-fought first half. Both teams, Side Creek clearly dominating the first half, but because their offensive line looked awfully good out there against those Yates lines. Just like... Well, don't go away, folks. Halftime's coming up, and when we say halftime, we mean halftime. There's your score. We'll be right back. Band and drill team.
marching band is coming up. Some people who start bonfires never even set foot in the forest. It's the Jack Yates Lions marching band and drill team.
Sunday Night Sports. Stay tuned. Set a goal to give five hours a week and 5% of your income to the Counts for all of the scoring in the game. Creeks up by 10, and that's not much margin of safety when you're playing the Yates Lions. No, it's not, bud, and I'll tell you, a team as explosive as the Yates Lions, anything could happen in the second half. And I'm sure Coach McGowan has talked to them about what their priorities are for the second half. Let us not forget that this Yates team scored 68 points last week against the Walter Rams. To say they have quick strike capability would be to severely understate the truth. Yates is going to kick off to Creek. Cougars get their hands on the ball first. Only one turnover in the game. It was a lost fumble by Yates. It led to a 67-yard touchdown drive. Uh, he will down that in the end zone. In the parlance, in case anybody cares, that's called a muff. <laughs> There'll be a short quiz after tonight's game, so make sure and take notes. Bud Thomas, along with... Otis Mack and Evelyn and Kurt and everybody else in the truck and behind the cameras, we're at Tully Stadium. First round of the 1993 Texas High School Football Playoffs. One of the, if not the premier game in all of Region 3 and the greater Houston area at any level. It's Yates and Side Creek. Cogdale hands off on first down to Gilbert, who goes nowhere. The Lions come out fired up. Yes, number 52, Arthur Jackson on the tackle and like I said earlier but I would have loved to have been into the dressing room the eighth line just to see what coach McGowan had to say to his troops <sighs> I, I'm not sure if he said anything he might have yelled plenty but somehow I'm not sure if he said much of anything Gilbert and McNulty behind Cogdale on second down left end Dragged down by an arm by Walter Kemper. Yes, and an excellent play because he had indeed turned the corner, at least we thought so. I don't even think he got a yard. Might have got back to the line of scrimmage. Third down, nine. Basically a full house tonight at Tully. It seats 12,000, and they're too deep around the perimeter fence. Cogdale's going to keep it all the way. He's got a lane. He will have the first down. Keeper all the way. Had plenty of room and a blocker out in front of him. And I think he caught Yates flat-footed. Yes, he did on a misdirection. Everyone was keying on the running back, Warren McNulty. And forgot to keep an eye on the man that had the football. And that was the quarterback. So Cogdale does it on his own. Picks up the first down. And Creek is in business here in the second half. We're one minute, 30 seconds into quarter number three. Creek from the eye, McNulty. Some studly running from Mr. McNulty. Yes, and he's back to his old tricks once again, bud. He is off and running like he did in the first half. He really did a lot of damage between the tackles to Yates early on in the first half and it appears that he's doing the same thing in this drive. A nice run of about what, eight yards, seven, eight yards. 5'10", 183 pounds, senior. Warren McNulty gets the ball again. This time, he'll turn the corner hard and take it down inside the Yates 45 before he is tripped up and the Cougars continue to do it on the ground. They've thrown a total of three passes in the game. Completed two of them. Both of those were for first downs back in the first period. And I tell you, but with a team like Yates that over pursues and with the team speed that they have, he just saw the lane on the cutback. Could have easily been six points because there was nothing but green for a long time. Absolutely essential for the Cougars to keep the Lions in a hole. Cogdell, keeper. Well, he didn't take a, didn't take a slide this time. 
but he does run into Willie Dorsey. But it's good for a first down. We've got a flag. It appears to be an unsportsmanlike conduct somewhere on the field. Well, there, there wasn't another Cycre Cooper within 15 yards of the play, so no, they call it offsetting. All right, that was after the play was whistled dead. Yes. Offsetting fouls. Basically a warning from the referee that says, I'll be in charge of this game, or guys will start sitting down. And now we've got an official timeout. So they'll have a series of meetings followed by a couple of conferences. Maybe they'll issue a few directives, send a few faxes, and we'll get back underway. 9.05 to go, third period. When you have a game of this magnitude and with so much on the line, emotions are going to run high. And apparently that's what happened on that last uh, infraction between the two players. Well, that's the key I was talking about for the Cougars, is to keep emotion out of the Yates arsenal. Because when they get rolling, look out. On first down, gives it to Bruce Rios, who checks in the backfield for Ty Gilbert. I tell you, bud. Cy Creek's winning the ball game where you have to win it, and they're winning it in, in the trenches. They're just dominating the defensive line right now. It's nice to hear a former defensive back acknowledge the obvious that the lineman... If he learned to respect linemen real quick. Yes. That's, that's very good to hear. Of this. Especially when you find one in your face. Kai Dillon, second down, will go down. Care of Gerald Butler, 6'5", 257. That's a load. Loss of four. And it may just be what the Yates Lions needed to get them going here. Five wide receivers, shotgun formation. That means the linebackers are going to have to come out in coverage. Cogdill. Todd Mercer, boy, he had some big catches in the first period. And I tell you, he just sat back there, bud, and drilled it right across the top. Something else setting back there on the 40-yard line, and that's a yellow hanky. Yes, and it appears to be against the Side Creek Cougars because they are moving in the wrong directions if you're a Cougar fan. A little holding. So, Creek now shoots themselves right in the foot. Something they did not do in the first half. In a big break for the eighth Lions. Well, Cogdell doesn't really have the arm to throw deep, although he's had the protection thus far. But you know, they really haven't had to pass the ball that much. They've run the ball extremely well this evening. Line up in the eye. Rios is the up back. McNulty is the deep back. Behind Cogdill. McNulty plays off two great blocks and loses it. Before it is covered at the 31-yard line. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. As one of those linemen, Tom Dracos, Saves a turnover and will at least give Creek time to punt if they so choose, but they're going to go for it. And I tell you, they had the eight lines at every chance at that fumble. Inside just rolled, saw their hope roll right away. Five wide receivers. Cogdill has the pocket collapse around him. Kenneth Knotts. Finishes him off, and the Lion defense bends but doesn't break. And they'll give their offense pretty darn good field position from their own 35. The one key but that I feel that may make a difference in this ball game is that a team as physical as Yates, with the size and team speed that they have, it will be key to see how Cy Creek responds to that, to that power late into the ball game. After you pound it on and pound it on, 
fatigue may determine who wins or loses this ball game later on. Jackson on first down. Well, I was just going to say Yates gets their hands on the ball for the first time, down by only 10 points. That's about a 25-yard gain on first down into Side Creek territory. Yes, and the Yates crowd comes alive, and it may be the one spurt that they need to get back into this ball game. Well, the crowd's certainly back in. And they're standing on their feet. Movement in the backfield, and a flag in uh, mayhem. I think every official, including those in the stand, threw a flag on that one, but... Well, Jackson flinched in the backfield, and that led to a little bit of movement in the line. Don't think Creek jumped. Then we go as illegal procedure. It'll cost the eight lines five yards. First down 15. Halfway through the third period. Clinton Lee picks up the first down. And that big offensive line of the Yates line starting to make their presence be felt. And they're starting to show just a little power of their own as they're starting to make a dent into the Side Creek defensive line. I'd say they're opening up gashes. I could have come close to running that one myself for about the same yardage. From the eye on first down, Quentin Lee. Shoestring tackle. Number 55, Ryan Taylor on the stop. Pat Johnson there also, number 76. Lee lost a yard, second down 11. What makes it so dangerous the eight lines is that quick strike capability that you talked about so earlier, bud. Anything can happen when you look at the eight lines. Jackson. And another huge hole in that offensive line. I'll tell you, they're starting to gel just a little bit in making this running game quick. Ryan Fay on the stop for Creek. Gain of six, third down five. Jackson starting to get his feet up under him and running with authority in the second half. Lee. He'll be short. Keith McWilliams on the stop. Of course, of course, Keith was the guy who dropped the fake punt back in the first half. A momentum shifter indeed. Imagine what, have ha what would have happened if he had have held on to that pass. Fourth and one. And the crowd is on, the, on their feet on both sides of the stand. Lee will pick up the first down easily. And he hit up in there pretty tough. But I tell you, he ran with authority. Both of these teams ranked in the top 10 in the state, in the top three in the area. Combined 19 and one on the season, but they're playing sudden death. The winner goes on, the loser sits and watches the rest of the playoffs and looks back on an otherwise successful season. This is Lee, he's got blockers, but the pursuit gets there. Gale get inside the 10, but not much more. Yes, and it had a student body left, which Side Creek answered with their own student body. Ryan Taylor, big number 55, got there for Creek. They can get a first down at the one. Ball is on the nine. Hear those calculators clicking at home. Jackson goes nowhere. 
There's Pat Johnson again. You know, when you start getting inside that 20-yard line, Jess says, and not to refer to the Oilers, but the field gets short. And you have to change the way that you go up and down that football field, and that's what's starting to happen to the Yates Lions. You don't have a lot of room to work in that end zone, especially if you're running a pass pattern. And it does adjust the way that you make, make you play calls. Oh, a penalty. Play. Called by the far line judge before the ball was set for play and before the 25 second clock went off. Very interesting. I missed the signal while I was gabbing. <laughs> um, a procedure call against Yates, but they weren't set yet. Interesting. Uh, go figure. That could be a huge penalty. Yes, it could, and I tell you, at the most inopportune time. Third and 13. First down is possible at the one. Porter with time, throws over the middle. And he Complete. caught they give the it to pass. Him. Brady Bob hauls it in in double coverage. Referees took their time to give the indication, but Bob is going to be real close to the first down. Depends on the mark. Nope, they won't give it to him. Fourth and one. Biggest play of the game so far right here. 1.51 to go, third period. And the crowd again on its feet. Yes, he did. He, I believe he does have the first down, but I believe so. And so do about 7,000 Yates fans. A the sea of scarlet and gold. So the Lions pick up a first down. They'll have four tries to put it in. goes over the top and in yes and the Lions are on the scoreboard and the six points that the eight Lions were indeed looking for and have got comes at the 119 mark of quarter number three a huge time-consuming drive but done with efficiency and I tell you all of a sudden an inspired offensive line by the eight Lions that line started to move a few people off off the ball there, bud. Ooh, well, it's not pretty, but it works. Yes, it does. Daryl Allen is it's close to the old dying quail kick. So the Lions take their opening possession of the second half, march right down the field, pick up a touchdown in the process, and cut the Side Creek lead to a field goal with 119 to go in the third. Now, the Creek offense needs to answer. Of course, the field goal would still leave them vulnerable by points. Yes, it would. But one thing Side Creek must do is get out there and take a few minutes off the clock themselves. That was a long time consuming drive by the Yates Lions. When you look here, one minute, 19 seconds left in the quarter. That was a very fast quarter, bud. Very fast indeed. And a very cleanly played quarter. There's, uh, I think a total of three penalties so far. No turnovers, although <laughs> one fumble that bounced about 20 yards before it was finally fallen on by Creek to hang on to it. And if I'm not mistaken, the crowd is indeed getting its money's worth this evening. No question about it. From a yard deep in his own end zone, and all the way out to the 20-yard line goes Eric Smith. A dangerous decision. And I think this is Creek's worst field position of the game. Yes, it is. Boy, you know, it's, uh, that's that old maxim. You don't feel the kick inside your own 10. He fielded that one at his own one. His momentum carried him into the end zone. Had he let it bounce, it might well have been a touchback, as is it's a moot point, because he ran it all the way back out to the 21. 
plus one on the kick return in the reverse. That's Gilbert. Steps inside of one. Picks up about four. The one thing that Cy Creek has done well all evening is take advantage of the team speed that Yates Lines has and also on the overreacting on the plays and over pursuit. Second and six. Nice shot of the lower torso of the Cy Creek Cougars. McLoon goes in motion. McNulty, left corner, turns, and picks up the first down. Just put his shoulders down, churn those feet, let it go. He's brought down by number 61, Jason Alec. Side Creek held Yates scoreless in the first half. I'm not sure that anybody has accomplished that on the season, <laughs> or probably in several years, frankly. But that's only one half. And it's not over until it's over. The delay to Rio will get maybe two. Nobody cleared for Yates. Twelve more minutes to go. I agree. Has a field goal lead and the ball. We'll be right back. On their first possession, and now Creek is on the move. One first down in their pockets. Cogdill on the roll. He'll keep it. Cut back up. First down across the 40, across the 45. And he finds a nice seam in the Yates defense and takes advantage, moves the chains. I'll tell you what, that's a play that Yates probably wishes they had in their playbook right now. Sean Porter, of course, a guy very fleet of foot in his own right. He is, but I tell you, one thing that uh, Cy Creek has taken advantage of is finding those seams in the Yates defense and with some success. Slot left. First down. Cogdell running out of time, tucks it. Finds more daylight, picks up another first down, and, and draws a flag. Yes, the Hankies are out, so I think he'll tack on another 15. Well, that's just a boneheaded play for Yates on defense. And it's going to put them deep into the Yates Lions end of the field. Well, a gain of 13 yards on the scramble and add another 10 on the penalty. That'll push the line of scrimmage all the way down to the 8, 26. And a big penalty indeed, but Mr. Photogenic Otis Mack here with us tonight. Yes. Well-known male model and sometimes sportscaster. McNulty cannot get around Landry Cooper. That's, that's got to be a scary thing to see McNulty coming at you with a room around the side. Yes, because he has an array of moves, and he's used them all this evening. I think the Ace Lions have seen a little bit of everything from number 22. I think we've seen a little bit of everything, period, here tonight. What a game it's been. A three-point game. 10-7 Creek with the ball and a drive. And getting dangerously close to field goal range. Second and ten. Couple of fakes. Cogdill over the middle. Number 11. Finds Steve Gibbs for the first down. Throws it right into the heart of the Lions coverage. Ooh, a man with ice in his veins. Yes, because he takes a hard hit and hangs on to the ball. Slick. No surprise, they're undefeated. Yates only loss, first week of the season, in Dallas to the Carter Cowboys. And this is one game that's going to go down to the wire. Gibbs sets to the right, quick give to the left. 
believe that was Gilbert. No. Nope. Joel Rios. Bruce Rios. Sorry, Bruce. Number 35. Mr. Rios. 170-pound running back. Well, there are very few bleacher benches left empty here at Tully Stadium, and there are people all the way around the perimeter fence, sometimes two people deep, which is a fire hazard out the wazoo, but people seem to be living with it. Second down, Cogdell from the shotgun. Oh, hello. Arthur Jackson meets Kyle Horton in no uncertain terms, but Horton hangs on. And talking about a big time hit in any level from high school to the pros. That was one of them. You could hear it from all the way up here, bud. First down marker is the five yard line. Third down five. Five wide receivers. Cogdill again from the shotgun. Perfect snap. Looking right. Has a man wide open. Rios. And they call it a touchdown. I believe that is a good call as he did cross the plane of the goal line before he dropped the ball or actually had it poked out by someone's helmet. And, and he, yes, and he had crossed the goal line, but a very heads up play by the wide receiver. Bruce Rios. The running back. Yes, from the right slot, wide open. Ward to try the extra point. A flag, the kick is perfect. And the referee stop play, probably an offensive penalty. Nope, offside, Yates. Predict to be declined. And the Cougars keep the pressure on. They answer a touchdown in kind and stretch the lead back to 10 points with 8.53 to go in the game. And the 10 points starting to look and loom larger for the Yates Lions. Well, still plenty of time in the game, obviously. Impressive drive, though, indeed, by Cy Creek. One thing you have to realize, though, bud, that last drive that Yates had consumed an awful amount, awful amount of time on their clock. They're going to have to strike and strike quick in order to get back into this ball game. 17-7. And one key factor is a team well coached as the Cy Cypress Creek Cougars. They get the ball back under their hands. They are going to eat some time off of the clock. There's Kevin Ward. Perfect on the game. Five foot ten inch senior. Doubles as a defensive back when he's wearing both of his shoes. with some dangerous guys deep. Not the least among them, the number one kick returner in the Houston area, Jarrell Jackson. Willie Dorsey can't find the handle. He'll have to settle for the touchback. And he'll think about that one for a little while as he kneels in the end zone. But he makes a very wise decision indeed. So the Lions will open up this drive from their own 20-yard line. The huge 80 yards in front of them. Both teams have enjoyed really pretty good field position throughout the game. I don't think anybody has started a drive inside their own 20. This one will be at the 20. Jackson, the lone setback on first down. Porter rolls right. Finds pressure. Can't run away from it. And he will lose three as the pocket collapsed around him. Pat Johnson, number 76, once again in on the tackle. And just excellent defense by the Cy Creek Cougars. No one was open on that pass play. Now the Cy Creek defensive line fired up in their own right. Jackson, oh, look out. First down, easily. Mike Court had to make the stop. 
Gain of 5, 10, 15, 20 yards. Yes, and a nice run indeed by Jackson. The East Lions. Lions trying to get something going. Down by 10. Nice catch. Freddie Bob with a circus catch on the out. Be about a yard shy of the first down. That was Ward out there to make the tag, but in high school, you're down when you're down. Just like that in college, too, for that matter. Only in the NFL can guys get up off their knees. But the eight lines, the eight lines in very good field position. Second down in a short two. A one to go. They're staring at midfield. Jackson, what a move. Gets by Ward. Josh Williams finally had to make a stop as Jackson, Jackson sidestepped Ward. Sidestep court and picked up, I don't know, 25 more. That's another 25, 30 yard pop by Jackson. And it, could, and it couldn't have happened at a better time for the H line. The Lions on the move from the Creek 25. Porter looks like a screen, but it's not. Gets the pass off. I believe that will be out. Oh, there's a flag. Oh, they have a flag. Oh, that was a stupid hit. That was Orsak. And if it's from the spot of the foul, Kate will be back into this ball game. Got some scores. Final. Madison sends Stratford home. 13 to 7. Elsick over Lamar. 24-7 in the fourth. We can probably put that one in the bag. Laporte doubled up Nimitz, 34-17. Dulles leading Clear Lake by a point in the fourth period from Rice Stadium. Once again, Bay City stomping Fur at halftime, 35 zip. As expected. Quentin Lee. It's drilled by Ryan Taylor as he tried to turn the left corner. And I tell you, bud, he made lemons out of into lemonade on that particular one because he did not have anything to go with. And I believe squeezed out a couple of yards on that play. <laughs> Mr. Metaphor, Otis Mack. It's almost as if Arthur was sitting there. <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> but indeed, he's on the other side of the glass. Lee gets the call on second down. Of course, Arthur, my usual partner in crime up here, has a radio gig and is, in fact, on the air live as we tape this on a Friday night on KYOK AM 1590 with his, his partner in crime, Daryl K. Artisan, high school beat writer for the Houston Post and broadcaster extraordinaire. Third and goal. Porter has Bob in the end zone. Touchdown. And the Yates side of the field goes wild. Still plenty of time left in this game. And Yates comes back and answers the touchdown that's High Creek. That just scored just minutes ago. Well, the Lions hang tough. Which again is hardly headline news. And I believe they're going to go for they're two go, points. They are going to go for two. 17-13 is the score as this point after takes place. And there's a reason, bud, because if Yates is behind in penetration and also first down, the only way they can win this ball game is by points. They're going to give it to Quentin Lee, who is not going to get there. Richard Mays shut it off. And now the Lions down by four points with 5.42 to go in the game. Now, I really don't think it makes that much of a difference, but other than the fact of momentum for the Side Creek Cougars on this next drive, and reason saying that when you look at penetration, 
first down yardage gained I believe all that stands in on behalf of the Side Creek Cougars which may have been excellent strategy by coach McGowan he's still in the same position more than I he scored those two points the field goal would have made it look maybe just a little bit easier but taking a look at their kickers on the eight side side of the ball I wouldn't put a lot of confidence in it just taking a look from here could be a very interesting kickoff as the lines come out in their seemingly normal kickoff formation Milton Powell one of the few 290 pound kickers in the state of Texas is not the nation head on short kick 20 yard line Ryan McLoon out to the 30 and Creek will have the ball a little over five and a half minutes on the clock and a four point lead Still anybody's game. Well, I'd say the one thing that Creek has really done a terrific job of is keeping the Yates crowd out of this game. And they are a force to be reckoned with. And they've done that effectively this whole ball game. Two tight ends. McNulty tries to spin out, but can't. Benny Hamilton, 6'2", 190-pound linebacker, looking pretty happy. And I tell you, if any time the Yates defense has to stand tall, this is the series. Because we are quickly and rapidly approaching five minutes in the ball game. They must stop Side Creek on this drive. They're going to get an opportunity at scoring once again to go ahead in this ball game. Cogdill is going to try to keep her again. He's got room. Out to the 40. Needed to get to the 42. And the Yates Lions just cannot seem to solve the Mark Cogdill puzzle. Not at all, but and I'll tell you, he has scrambled well all night long, especially in the second half. I suppose that was a scramble, although it looked like... He was going to be on the run from about the second step. Third and one. Huge play for the eighth defense. Power eye. I saw movement. There's a flag. Togdo will have the first down at the play stands. Uh, Yates was in the neutral zone. Whether or not Cy Creek moved in the offensive line will be the determining factor. Possibility that the center, once again, a heads up play. Offside, Yates, first down, side three. He catches them once again in the neutral zone and snaps the ball, maybe just a little bit faster than he normally would. It's the five yards. Is it going to? No, it is, it is against Yates. Some of the other first round matchups in region Division two, that would be the smaller 5A schools. Mark Consolidated and Westbury. Jones and Mady Creek. MacArthur and Port Arthur Jefferson. Galveston Ball, 9 and 1 against Angleton. Stratford and Madison. We've already heard what happened there. Washington and Katie, battle of the defenses. McNulty on first down. Spins ahead for about two. Nimitz in the port, we heard about that. Texas City and Willowridge. Right here at Tully Stadium, Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Of course, all this will long since be history as you view this show on Sunday night or Monday night. Right here on E1, one of the educational channels and a member of the Access Houston family. We are Sunday Night Sports. That's Arthur over there on the left, and my name is Bud. Strictly on a first-name basis here. Stutter step, McNulty, good for about eight. Apparently Otis doesn't have a lot to say when nobody's around with a camera and a flash bulb. And I tell you, bud, just taking a look at that particular drive there. The one thing that Side Creek's going to have to do is keep this drive going because 
As you look at the clock, they're under three minutes. They really do. It's going to be curtains for the eighth lines if they don't do something and do something fast. They need a big play. Doc Jill's going to go with an audible. He's running out of time. Four, three, two, and he gets it off. And he gives it to McNulty, who's got a corner to turn, and he does. First down. Hangs on to the ball inside the 35. The clock will stop to move the chains. A huge first down for Cy Creek. And, and suddenly, the people start to stream out of the Yates grandstands. And a big play indeed. And a good audible by the quarterback. Heads up play. Heads up call. Clock rolling, 2-15. One more first down, this one's in the bag. Give it to the up back. That's Gilbert. Keep it on the ground, right up the gut. Gain of about two. And Yates has to burn a timeout. They had three to work with. One key here, bud, is that Yates, they're going to have to keep Cy Creek out of field goal range. And the reason why they say that, that would put him back up to seven. And if they did score, he would still be forced to go for two. That's not on their side this evening. Now this game will have to be decided on the scoreboard. Gilbert got about a yard on first down. There's a view way over yonder. A lot of happy people wearing, I guess that's sor sort of a variation on the Columbia Blue theme. Les Kenning's Cy Creek Cougars have a four-point lead and the ball with 2.01 to go in the game. This drive has already consumed three minutes 54 seconds. And I'm not surprised in the least bit with the Cy Creek Cougars and the way that they are eating up the clock. Power eye on second down. Excuse me, Otis. Oh, they're gonna, oh it's going to be Cogdill again on the keeper. Another slide, another first down, and that might do it. Yates still has two timeouts. Yes, and it also puts them and places them into field goal range. Which indeed could be the kiss of death for the eighth line. But how they say it's not over until it's over, bud. Hey, that play itself right there might have been the kiss of death. Well, let's see. There were going into this weekend's competition one half dozen undefeated, untied teams in the state. Get to it after this play. McNulty, he's got a scene. Turns around it, down to the 15. Gain of about six. Side Creek, of course, was one of them. Euless Trinity from the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex is the other 10-0 team in Division I. Division II, Dallas Carter. The lone loss on the Jack Yates Lion Ledger this season. Del Rio, DeSoto, Lubbock, Monterey, and Victoria all the way in with 10-0 records. And I tell you, bud, just to give you an update on the stats, just in case Yates does manage to tie this ball game and Cy Creek does not score. First downs. Cypress Creek, Creek has the advantage, 21 to 15. Penetrations are even at three. Wow. What a game. So Yates had to burn timeout number two. They've got one left. 119 on the clock. Second and four. Line of scrimmage will be the Yates 15. There's an awful lot of folks heading for the Yates. I tell you, a very hard fought battle on both sides of the line tonight, bud. Neither team has anything to be ashamed of. And the referee sets the ball ready for play. Yellow. 16, 15, 14. This will be the last play of the game. Might just see Cogdill take a knee. 
And he does. And the clock rolls out. Side Creek is 11 and 0. They'll move on next week. Yates will go home, heads held high with a 9 and 2 record. A tough, tough game for the Yates Lions. Yes, it was. And I tell you, when you look at the way that Side Creek prepared for this ball game, they wanted where it counted, bud, right in the trenches. And to kind of give you an idea exactly how they did it, number 22 for Side Creek, Warren McNulty, 25 carries, 129 yards. And also, the running back for Yates, Jackson, had 116 yards. A very well-played ball game. It really was. Uh, there were not too many penalties, but the ones that were there were costly for both teams. Seemingly a little bit more so for Yates than for Side Creek. Both teams had their running games working, and both teams had their passing games working at times, although it looked like, again, the Cougars probably got a little more mileage out of theirs. Yes, they did, and they took advantage of the breaks when they had them and when it counted the most. The Cougars definitely had the advantage on third down conversions. And they just played a tough game. That's just all there is to it, pretty simple. <laughs> and I tell you, you have to have one happy coach over there and coach Les Canning. I think you can count on that. This may be his best shot at a state championship. He went to the state finals in 1979 at Memorial High School, lost to Temple 28 to six. That's the last time he came close. His Psycrete team four years ago in Sam Adams' senior year was highly ranked throughout the season, but they fizzled in the first week of the playoffs, and this is really the best shot he's had in ooh, the last 14 years or so. Yes, it is, and I tell you, when you draw in the first round, maybe the toughest, well, the toughest team in the Houston area that he could face and come up victorious, there's a lot for his Psycrete Cougars. Well, the Cougars passed the test. They are 11-0 and will advance next week to play. Don't know yet. We'll know more next week. And we'll be bringing you another playoff game next week right here on Sunday Night Sports. Well, Otis, I guess this one is, as they say, history. Yes, it's in the bag. Well, it's a big win. Well, then, let's get on out of here. Okay. For Otis Mack, my name is Bud Thomas. And the rest of the game behind the cameras and in the truck. Howdy, Evelyn. Howdy, Kurt. We are out of here. From Tully Stadium, your final score, the Side Creek Cougars, 17, Yates, 13. Ranked. And, of course, Yates, a 5A Division II state finalist a year ago. But Jeff Power reports that run has come to an end for the Lions. The big game in Region 3 featured the top two teams in the greater Houston area in 5A Division I, the Cypress Creek Cougars and the Yates Lions. 17,000 fans packed Tully Stadium Friday night in what would turn out to be a defensive struggle. Cypress Creek began the scoring with this five-yard sprint to the corner by Warren McNulty, who had 129 yards rushing on the evening. The Cougar defense shut out Yates for nearly three quarters as the Yates passing game only managed 81 yards on the evening. But Yates battled back on the ground. Robert Jackson's plunge up the middle late in the third quarter made it 10-7 Side Creek. To the fourth quarter, Cougar quarterback Mark Cogdill finds Bruce Rios wide open at the five-yard line, and he plunges in for the touchdown. Yates wasn't through, though. Sean Porter hits Brady Bob for the touchdown, but too little, too late. Cypress Creek topples Yates 17-13 to, to advance to the second round, where they'll meet Aleep Elsick. In the greater Houston area, I'm Jeff Power. Cy Creek's next challenge comes from an improved Aleep Elsick Ram team that surprised Houston Lamar. The Redskins going down to defeat. And on the rest of that...